What's in the can? What's in development? What's in the can and what's in development? Um, you know, you always have something, you know. We have about five or six projects trying to get off the ground and moving about, you know. And um, there were several projects that we've been working on for a number of years. And, uh, and, and that's a bad thing because um, it's sort of like, um, you know, you can't concentrate on one thing. You have to be scattered all over the place. It makes it very difficult to be creative in a sense. Um, Is that just to beat the odds? It's, yeah, he, like I uh, like mentioned Paul Heller earlier, he just had that one film to do, you know, and 10 years go by and just, you know. So you have to have about a dozen of those things waiting in the wings of something they go, you know. It's like, you know, what's that expression? Like uh, something to throw a number of things against the wall, something might stick. Well, it's, it, it's that sort of attitude. You, you spend all your time running from one project to another, trying to get it developed. We were try I was trying to do this one on Paul, Paul, Paul ropes and um, uh, spending a year and a half on that, and then it looked like it wasn't going to happen, you know. And so I took this job at Cal Arts, you know, because nothing was happening, and that's the irony of this business. And uh, and so I, I didn't want to didn't want to take the job at Cal Arts because some, this this might happen, and then it didn't. And so I took the job at Cal Arts, and the moment I signed the contract there, then all these other projects came back again, you know. It's like it's either feast or famine. And uh, so uh, now they look like they're going, you know, they're not as happening now again. So it, it's it's just madness, you know. Um, it, it's 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 not a job for sane people. <laughs> Any filmmakers in the audience? I see one, two. Any advice to a would-be <laughs> filmmaker? Please. Oh, any advice to a would-be filmmaker? I I would too. I mean. First of all, I, I, I wouldn't encourage anyone, really. I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, all my friends, really, I, I, I would give them all sorts, of, all sorts of warning. There's people who make it, you know, but all, I swear to you, all my friends are out, out of work now and gone into other things and uh, uh, you, you know, they, they, they're, they're getting kicked out of their apartments. Uh, but I would say that you know, if you are going to be a filmmaker, you have to be very passionate about it and and and, and really work hard at it. And um, um, you know, just you know, improve on your skills and talent and things like that. But I would say anything. Else, I would the thing I would say is that if you're going to be one, make sure you make a lot of films now and and, and where you be where you uh, feel that you can make any film. That you walk on a set and you can, you can make it work. I remember I asked you the same question three years ago. And what's one of the things that struck me um, is you said to this would-be filmmaker, never lie to yourself. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, there's a number of things. One, um, well, for example, there's some films I can't do. There's some films I don't want to do. I mean. This last one I tell you about, I had this awful experience with. Um, uh, uh, I kind of wanted to do it, but then after I found out, I should have quit. And I, I was saving a lot of gray hairs and stuff, you know, and all sorts of madness. Um, there was one film I didn't want to do, but I wasn't. I, I tried to get it out. Of, I tried to get out of it in a in a sort of strange way by being too critical. And initially, when they asked me about the script, I read it. I said, "Well, it needs this," and then I give them a whole bunch of notes about this thick, you know, and thinking that I'll be able to get out of it grace, gracefully. And uh, and I was surprised when he came back and said, "Yes, we like what you said." And we'll... <laughs> I was like, "Oh God!" You know? And uh, so, and 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 that was one of the worst experiences I had. Before this other, <laughs> and um, it was madness on that one too. I mean, but but no, but but I, I, I think you have to to really know what you can do and can't do. But the way things are now is that you better take anything. You know, if you can't, you better say you can because the way the job situation is, you know. You, but no, you, you really have to be honest with yourself. And, and uh, okay, let's let's take some questions from the audience. Sir? Can 
you talk a bit about your choice of scripts? Are the films we're seeing scripted by you? Did you choose them? What is the process? Can you talk about the, the whole process? Um, um, I think my earlier work was from scripts that, that I did. Um, uh, but the later one, uh, because, um, you know, it, it takes a while to write a script. At least it takes me a while to write a script, you know. Um, and that keeps you out of, the, out of the playing field for a long time, you know. Um, the agent wanted me to say, well, you should just get, you know, get people who write scripts and find the scripts that you like and do it that way. It's a lot faster and so forth, which is somewhat true. But it's, it's really hard to find work that you like, but you find things that are very close to what you like. And, and uh, you write writers that have the same sensibilities, and you, you try to work in, in, like that. You know, where you guys share the same kind of feelings. It's harder for me because uh, the things I like to write about, um, it's, it's kind of hard to sell. So it's uh, it's a problematic thing for me. Uh, no one seems to be interested in my <laughs> in, in my material. I said they don't run to it. They run away from it. If anything, so. Uh, but the, the 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 glass shield was uh, uh, it be, I had rewrote that from a, a, a like a page one rewrite. If the first script there's, there's, there's nothing in it, you know, um, which is good if you can do something like that, find something so that you all let it grow and grow and grow to something else, uh, because that was like a TV script at the beginning, and then um, uh, it was very limited in a way, so I just took it and expanded it to something that made it where I was pleased with it and things like that. Um, but I have to be careful when I do work with other people, with other writers' material, because you don't want to just like this area to take over and just, just destroy their concept and ideas, you know, because it's just as valid as yours. But I mean, if you're a director, you want to make it work, you want, you want to, to be able to make it work for you, because it's going to be your vision in a sense. And, it's only through your eyes in a way that it can work. I, I, I did a film, I won't mean, mention the name of it, but um, there was a writer who, I liked the idea, but there were some things I had to break, I mean, I had to, I knew there was going to be a war at each level of having taken things out of it because I wasn't, I wasn't happy with it. But the, but the basic idea I, I liked. And um, I managed to, to get a lot of the stuff out, and uh, I'll show you how it works. Uh, there was a scene, I couldn't get this writer to uh, redo, and I couldn't understand the scene. And, uh, um, you know, I, I would ask, well, what does it mean? And he said, well, you, you know, it means, you know, this is the answer, you know, it means, I said, okay. So I knew at some point uh, the actors are going to ask me about this scene, and sure enough, um, today we're going to do this scene. Uh, um, the two actors came up to me and says, Charles, can you t t tell me about this scene? <laughs> you know, and you have to come up with something reasonable and logical for them to understand you know, what it's about, what we work with. And so uh, I came up with some logic, you know, that they were satisfied with. And I said, oh, God, thanks. <gasps> And, but you get a lot of that sometimes. You don't understand it, but you have a writer who has a lot of control or something like that. So I, I try to avoid things, certain kinds of scripts, you know, if I can. Particularly if, if in, in TV, there's no question, the, the writers, you know, it, that's what happens. It's gone and things like that. You can't make any changes. It's, it's a writer's medium. But in terms of independent film, um, it's best if you get material that you're really, really passionate about. You know, not just for a job. And in the last couple of films I did, it was with jobs, you know, I really hate that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, really hate that. The Sleep with Anger is your own script. Yeah, Sleep with Anger is my own, yes. And that was a difficult uh, script um, because um, it was funded by, well, it, it, it was initially going to be funded by CPB, Corporation for Open Broadcast. And I had developed another script with them based on a true story. Of a, of a, a murder that took place in my neighborhood of a young girl who was witness a crime, and she was asked to come forward and, and, and testify, and, and she did, but the police didn't protect her. And the lawyer 
the, the, the guy who was the defendant's lawyer gave her name out and, and she was killed. I thought that was awful. Because she was the same dentist I went to. I didn't know her, but it was just through that connection. But I thought it was just awful. And so I developed that and CPB wanted to change it to more of a Hollywood kind of a thing. And I said, no, it's based on reality, true story. And so I said, well, why don't I just sleep with uh, another film I could develop that had nothing to do with reality, but if you wanted to make any changes, I wouldn't feel too bad about it. So we started, I started to sleep with anger. And um, they started making these really uh, strange demands on changing a lot of stuff. And I said, no, this is taking what the heart of the movie about, away. And so we parted company. And, um, and they wrote this awful letter to me saying, I'm never going to be a, li oh, a writer things like that, you know, and it's, it's awful working with me and so forth. But the funny thing is, there was a scene in the movie that they wanted me to take out. And, uh, and I said, no, I just saw Horton Foote. He had a movie on television um, that had this long scene of people recounting the past on the veranda. Mm -hmm. And so this person said to me, yeah, but you're not Horton Foote. Okay. okay. And so, of course, I went, you know, very painful. But she did a lot of painful things. Anyway, so um, what happened was, and this was like like 89 or 90, something like that, right? And so I'm in Africa making this African film in Namibia. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm, I'm actually, no, I, I, I finished shooting, but I'm in post over there. And so I get this call from the States asking me, um, you know, we would like for you to to attend our, 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 our event we're having. I said, yeah, but I'm in Mississippi. I said, what is it? Well, we're going to give out an award. I said, yeah, but I'm in, I'm in Namibia. And do I have to be there? I said, yeah, you have to be there to get the award. But coming back from Africa. And so I was going to say no. And so I said, OK, be cool. So let's be polite. So I said, well, what? Well, what is the award, may I ask? And the lady said, well, it's a Horton Foot Award for screenwriting. <laughs> it's a Horton Foot Award for screenwriting. And I said, I'll be right there. <laughs> no problem, I'll be right there. So I sort of validated this sort of thing. And plus I got some awards afterwards, you know. But it was very difficult, you know. And it was just like, they wanted to take what was particular about it out, you know, the folkloric stuff, you know. They take out the, the whole thing. The, grandparents. <coughs> and, and so you get those crazy kind of situations. 